And Jakapong Jakra Judatip is the first Asian trans woman to be ranked by Forbes the richest trans woman in Asia and the third richest trans woman in the world. However, the path of her success was not paved with roses. JKN Global Group Public Company Limited's headquarters are located in JKN Empire Building and JKN Gallery Salaya Building. JKN Global Group has more than 15 subsidiary companies with nearly 1,000 employees. The story of its success began with the business of importing copyrighted content from around the world to Thailand selecting world-class content in all eight categories such as series, movies, documentaries, and news from global super brands. This business model has enabled the continued expansion of JKN's business operations to distributing copyright of Thai content in international markets through a subsidiary of JKN Global Content in Singapore. In addition, JKN, Best Life Company Limited, was launched with the goal of selling wellness-related products and services. To increase sales channels and reach people across the country, JKN owns a digital terrestrial TV, JKN 18 channel, to operate a business of selling commercial time. JKN has also launched a global economic news channel, JKN CNBC that bought the content rights from CNBC in the United States. JKN High Shopping Company Limited was set up to support JKN e-commerce and home shopping businesses. Moreover, JKN MNB Company Limited is a manufacturer of healthy beverages, and JKN Drink Company Limited is its distributor. The latest acquisition has made JKN the sole owner of the Miss Universe organization, which has made Anne Jakapong become the owner of three beauty competitions, which are the Miss Universe, Miss USA, and Miss Teen USA, with its headquarters in New York, USA. Well, people call me Andrew before, and my Thai name is Jakapong. Surname is Jakrachutatip. I was born outside of Bangkok, actually. My mother and my dad, both of them set up the small business grocery store. They moved to Bangkok when I was five. I went to Christian school from kindergarten until high school, boys' school, and I love it. <laughs> cute boys around me, to be honest, but I was so uncomfortable in my own skin because I knew when I was five years old that I was trapped in the wrong body. I was a girl. Whenever I look into the mirror, I knew straight away that this is not the body I belong to. When I came back home from school, I locked up the door, put the makeup. My sister found out later on Two of us, we um, became best friends. We did talk a lot, and I shared a secret with her that I'm your sister, actually, not the brother. And she loved me, that's why. She didn't think of anything else apart from having love over the sister. But she never shared a secret to anyone, including my mom and dad. I was uh, a queer. Everyone just called queer. Just being gay, being bi, that's all. But being trans women, we never heard of it. I got bullied a lot in the school. I had to hide myself from my own family. Teachers, not just one, but all of them, taking the whole group, not just me, but other queers also, maybe 10 of us, sit down and say that you have to change. Otherwise, you're going to have some problem here. As if we smoke or we do drugs, you know, and you have to quit. That is wrong. And of course, this is something natural. You're born with it. Did not enjoy my childhood so much. I had to think twice when I do this or do that. This is in front of my queer friends. 
This is in front of my family. So I was so careful all the time what I had to do because I have to behave as a son at home. And when I go to school, I can be a queer, but the very quiet queer. My mom, my dad, my sister, they have to pretend. They have to keep saying to everyone that my son just the decent boy. That's why he doesn't behave, you know, so playful. And I just have to be the double life person. Well, they just dress me up in the gold traditional dress as a little girl. But I felt so comfortable in my own skin and I went up on the stage. I think they made me sing the song also and I just entertained people. I just love it. I knew mm -mm, this is where I am. This is the dress. This is me. I supposed to do the Thai traditional dance. It's called Ramayana Khon. The leading role also. Almost six months to do the entire show. It's more than like 50 students. And I have to be there on the stage. One day before the show started, teacher said, a lot of um, young students, including your friends, they all come to stay in my house. I think you should come. Therefore, we make sure the next morning, 5 a.m., we all wake up and we get dressed because we had to perform at 8 o'clock. He was the music teacher. So I went to his house, but I found out later on that nobody came. Can I call my dad? Of course, I have to use your phone because we didn't have mobile at the time. Yeah. No, I think you should stay here. No problem. W where do I sleep then? Uh, well, we have two bedrooms here. My bedroom is here. Your bedroom is opposite. But when I sleep, during the night time, like, I assume around like almost midnight, he entered into the room and he locked up the door and he forced me to do whatever that he wanted me to do. And he said that if you say one single word, you won't be good in the school and you will be humiliated. Next day, no matter how painful you are, you still have to go up in the morning because you are the leading character. And I was um, shocked. I was in pain and I screamed out loud, but all locked up. The room, the house, the whole compound did not hear me. The next morning was very super painful and I locked myself in the shower room in his house. I felt so betrayed by the teacher that I trusted. And I sat down on the toilet seat, blood all over, and a shower. That moment, that minute, I started to realize that it wasn't just about me but it's about the whole team. So I need to go, go for them. If I did not go up on the stage, it means that I'm not the good leader. I'm not responsible. Therefore I did, but you know, you guess what? I could not perform in some parts, some dance. When I have to go down and get up again, I cannot get up. And my mom, my dad just came and said, are you all right? And I made decision not to tell anyone at all. I thought that my mom and dad might blame me of being queer. That's why the teacher approached me, harassed me, assaulted me. Because you're being queer. And the whole school will say that, okay, this boy got raped by the music teacher. It could become the national news when I go to report at the police station. What would happen if I have to come back to study? How people look at me, how other teachers would blame on me. And that would be the burden of my life. Therefore, I just kept it quiet to make myself safe. So I wrote a diary. I did not have any friends. I did not share this 
to my sister either. She was too young, and I don't want her to experience this kind of pain. My parents never knew, so I wrote everything in the diary, and the diary I kept in a closet. The only person or the only thing on earth that I trust is my diary. And whenever that I have to write, I just write them all. And I hold on into the diary every time when I just need to hug someone. Because I can feel the world is so lonely. So I just express myself by writing only. I kept writing, kept on writing, and kept on writing every night. No one knew that I hug the book, and I hold on until the next morning. That is my friend, and I talk to myself every time. When I feel lonely, I will come to you. When I don't have anyone to talk to, I come to you. Just don't leave me. I knew the story of one woman from the newspaper, the local Thai newspaper. Her name was Oprah Winfrey. I read about it, but it was very short. They said she got raped, and she became successful in terms of hosting television show. She got raped at nine. I mean, at just nine years old, even worse than me. So I thought, all right. From now on, I have someone to look up to. It was so inspiring. I wanted to become the TV host then, like her. I just want to be on television. That's how I thought. I want to become. The number one talk show host in Thailand. I have to learn on how to use the microphone and how to talk for sure to become the public speaker. I was a very shy boy at the school because I did not want to reveal myself. The minute that I was in front of people, they would say "queer, queer, queer, queer." Therefore, I was so careful. But I talked to myself no more. I have to break this. Otherwise, I will become the loser. I think it was the wake-up call for me. The minute that I got raped, that you have to be brave. You have to learn how to say no. You have to learn how to fight. You have to learn how to come up with the courage. You just cannot hide yourself. I kept hiding for 12 years. So I wrote everything in my diary that I wanted to become someone that people respect. No matter what, from now on, nothing can stop me. So I gained the strength at the age of 13. One year later, in the class, one of the teachers, right now the good one, asked everybody. Who would love to be the candidate for the public speaking competition? The whole class, nobody except me. Yes, please, I want to go. And everyone just look, they bully me again. <laughs> I guess she did not have any choice. That's why. All right, j a k a p o n g you just do it. I will train you. People can see me. I can be seen. And I can feel powerful, but I just need to be on the stage. That's all, to show I am not a coward. I'm someone. Don't touch me again, verbally, physically. You know what? The first one, <laughs> the speech competition, I won. I got number one. Then I started to do more than 100 competitions. I have to be successful to escape from being bullied. 
I was addicted to have the microphone. It was my weapon. There was one show on Channel 3. It's a debate show. Therefore, I chose a high school based on the criteria that they're going to send the team. I was the captain and I represented the school all the time. Final season, we won it. Yeah. And then I quit the school immediately after that. I got fed up with the education. I needed to learn English more in order to be the perfect television host. Therefore, I chose Sydney. So I love Australia. It was my second home. I was having the courage to change myself, to move from one place to another. Um, so I studied English for half a year, and then I went to TAF College, and I also worked in the petrol station. The owner, she called me Andy. Yeah. Oh, she loved me also because I worked so hard. So I collected all the money to pay off my study fee and I also bought second-handed car. Being Andy was the great moment actually of my life because I dressed as a queer. I had long hair. I became myself. I did not go full scale being a woman because I did not know what it was yet. But I knew myself I'm not gay. I don't want to be handsome, but I cannot go like fully beautiful yet. So I maintain myself not so manly, but not uh, becoming too beautiful. So people just see me as queer, queen. It was like big moment for me to enjoy myself. And I chose Bonn University where I graduated in two years. I chose the university myself because I was so ambitious. I just wanted to come back and fulfill the role, the duty of being the good son. No more eyelash, no more makeup, <laughs> no more long hair. <laughs> I had to be myself. At the graduation, I just would love to please my parents, particularly my mom. I cannot be queer anymore. I thought that I was queen. I never felt being gay. And I thought like, okay, I'm a woman. And they call queer queen. Okay, so I'm the queen then. And I love straight man. So from now on, I have to live uh, being me. And I swear to myself that, okay, I will become a man now because I just spent so good time here, five years being myself, being queer. But we own a home video shop. Family business, I cannot abandon them. It's a virtue in me that they raised me up. They had one son and my sister. So what else? Without home video shop, it's always the local show, the local comedy, Thai drama, either Thai movies. And I thought like we should do something different. We have to think outside the box. And I watched BBC every day. And I saw one show called Walking with Dinosaurs. It's a documentary from the beginning of the Earth until extinction of the dinosaurs. I thought, this is good. Why don't we just put that show for episodes into VHS? So I contact BBC that I have very little budget. And we own a video shop here. We can distribute all around Thailand. It's very first time that we have documentary. When I put it on VHS, nobody bought it. Nobody at all. And I watch TV show late at night. It's a home shopping, selling the product on TV. So I thought, well, why don't I just approach them at least? If someone see the trailer on television, they might be engaged by it the whole series and they can buy the whole package. How's that? Educational show. Then we did it. One million copies, so it became so big in the country. Everyone, particularly middle to upper class, said, wow, finally, we have something to watch. And then I talked to my dad, Papa, 
Finally, I return all the money that I owe you. I return everything within a year, and I got my first 10 million at the age of 21 years old. And I got started from there. So I went to England, attended BPC Showcase, and I became the exclusive distribution company for home video on the whole catalog and released them into Thai language in Thailand. After that, I moved on to National Geographic History Channel, Discovery Channel, and I introduced CSI into the country, the whole franchise, New York, Vegas, and Miami, including other Hollywood stuff, you know, movie series, Chinese, Japanese. I was the pioneer. I did bring all the famous drama series from Korea. They invited me to go because I bought so much content so many titles and I put on VHS and later on DVD, of course, and Blu-ray. So I became one of the biggest distributors in Thailand. VHS and DVD, a lot of people pirated. They don't respect the intellectual properties. I sold the whole entire platform to the factory that produced for us. I owe him the money, therefore I went to see him. My whole warehouse can go to you as long as you can write up my debt. Send me the contract tomorrow, I buy everything. Yeah. Thank you so much. From now on, I don't do home video anymore. I will sell content. We've been selling the content into the form of the DVD and the Blu-ray. They are just the platform that deliver the content. The platform would keep changing. I went to France, I went to Korea more, I went to Singapore a lot. I went to Hong Kong and I buy the content and I sell the content. And you know what? Kun Pai Bun, the owner, the largest company selling the satellite dish in Thailand, said that I want content from you. Do you think that you can do something else more? I would love to be the TV host for a long time. Similar to Oprah Winfrey, but I will call it Andrew Shaw. The Andrew Shaw and JK in Global Media. Yeah, so I interview people and I take people to places. He asked me after he saw the check that he has to sign, 60 million to me. He bought the content from me. He said that, would you mind to set up the company with me? <laughs> Young man, he said. <laughs> so I said, why not? I just do it in five minutes. Yeah, I need to focus on something that not existing yet in the market. Japan and Korean drama series. Let's do it. So I call it JKN. Four months later, we launched the channel. I got teased by people in the building. It's a big company that JKN is not Japan Korea Network. It actually stands for Chakapong Network. <laughs> it's a coincidence. It's not Japan Korean Network. It can be like, mm, Jagapong Network sounds good, like Oprah Winfrey, OWN, you know, OWN, Oprah Winfrey Network, like that. When I became uh, a little bit more successful, having my own channel, content distribution company that I own, I have more money now. So I thought to myself, like, I need a break. I need the entertainment. I need to be myself sometime. And I move up a little bit more and more because people started to know anyway that I'm not straight man. And then my mom broke my heart. She said, we decided to divorce, but not in really good term. It became war. And I got the effect the most because I have to look after the business. I have to look after myself. I cannot be myself. I had to look after them. I never confronted my mom and dad until the age of 35 when the Facebook came out because I never had a Facebook. But of course, my mom got Facebook before me. I bought the land and I had to party. So I dressed up as a woman. Everyone just like entertained me a lot. And I did entertain them. And she saw me in a party, dressed up like a girl. And she said, what is this? and I got shocked. You know what? I paused for two minutes. And then I look at her, and then I said, don't tell me that you sacrifice yourself alone. I also did it a lot. 
I did it all my life. Whether you can accept it or not, this is who I am. Next day in the morning, six o'clock, Dad, I'm the daughter. I'm not your son. And he turned to me. And he said, "Are you sure what you're talking?" Yes. But I just want you guys to be proud. Right now, you cannot carry on anymore. How much more that I have to prove myself to the whole world? People just look at me. They don't respect me. They don't look at my vision. They don't see my brain. They see my gender. They see me getting confused. They see me as a weird person. You want the good son. You always talk about what you want. You never ask me what I want. Papa, whether you accept it or not. But this is me. I cannot do anything else to prove. That I'm the good son to you. In fact, I'm the daughter. Then he hugged me and then he said, "Do you know what? Then you become my good daughter. Then I love you. No matter who you are." And it was a big relief. I hugged him like. I never did in my life because it was like being a son, hug a father, hugging my own papa is not kind of culture that we do all the time here. So I did it. My mom, she cannot accept it. She said that you have to change. Once again, this is about you, and you want me as the accessory, as a son. Next day, I moved out, and I never talked to her again. The next day, my sister she said, "I move out with you, and we will stay together in this little apartment. No problem." And I started to know the wording, trans woman. I like straight man, and I'm the straight woman, so I am called a trans woman. And I want to be independent. I went to talk to GMM. I also bought the company back, and of course I paid them cash. At the age of 35, I think that's it. I want to become who I am. Being a trans woman, we can be smart, we can be genius, we can be rich, we can be successful. So I will be the set example or life example to every one of them that I can do it. You cannot have the choice at the time of your birth, but you can have determination to be who you are. Right away, with high heel, I came into the company with my pride, and I started to go out to see the business partners dressing up like a woman, Andrew Steele, and I tried to list the company into the stock market, dressing up as a woman, but not yet had any plastic surgery. Hair loss, it was my main problem. I had the long hair, but up here. Start to go out, like a highway, yeah. So I had to cover with the longer hair from the middle part down here. Yeah, I contact Korea Embassy. You have any place that can grow up my hair in Korea? They suggested a few places, and what a big surprise! They said we can grow your hair. Can we please do your face? It's called facial feminization. Christmas Day, year 2015, and they did everything. I always wanted to become the woman in the mirror that I see. So I told them, facial feminization is not about the look; 
is about the inspiration. It's about my inner soul. Talk of the town, because I was quite known as Andrew. I went around, kept talking, inspiring people. But one thing I always said: you're gonna see the full version of myself, and I dress completely as a woman. Yeah, not Andrew anymore. Everyone, please call me Anne. Yeah. Then I started to do more and more and more. I did the IPO on November 30th, year 2017. Three months before the IPO, I went to see my mom. Actually, I would not abandon my father and my mom for sure. Even though I did not talk to her, but I know one day I would go back. After three years, I said this is the right timing, and I just want her to come and ring the bell. I just want her to be proud. Of her trans woman daughter, the market cap worth at about almost eight billion, <laughs> made me become a Thai billionaire. It was the happiest moment in my life. When I transform myself, they laugh at me. I am me. I am myself. I did the IPO on November 30th, year 2017. Christmas Day, in year 2017, I went to Sperm Bank in Los Angeles because I always wanted to become mother. Six months after, on the 1st of September, 2018, I just go under the gender reassignment operation. My mom actually took me and said, "Anne." So I woke up in the middle of the night. I just <laughs> slowly used my hand, touch on the part, and then <laughs> this is Anne. <laughs> I'm me now. <laughs> Even more surprised, the next morning, congratulations, Miss Anne. Your son was conceived. Oh my God! I became a woman, and I became a mother. Andrew was born in May. I went to pick up Andrew, and later on, yes, Angelica. Once you succeed, your life rewards will come to you. She perfected her role of CEO by achieving her goal of taking her company to MAI in the Thai stock market. After reaching this milestone, her life reward was to take a mother role. Her goal was to have a child. In December of 2017, she traveled to LA in the United States to visit a sperm bank with Yaya. Then she selected an egg donated by a German woman. Upon completion of legal procedures, she returned to Thailand and started taking medication for her hormones. In preparation for gender reassignment surgery, eight months later, her dream was fulfilled. She received the wonderful news: Andrew was conceived. It was the same day when she underwent a surgical procedure to become a woman. It was the same day when she became a full woman and a mother, like she had always dreamt of. On May 21st, 2019. Andrew was born, and she saw her baby's face for the first time on FaceTime. On June 2nd, 2019, she traveled to LA, United States, to pick up Andrew. Wake up. <laughs> On January 3rd, 2020, it was the birthday of Angelica, her little angel. This was Anne's proudest achievement that she could fulfill her dream beautifully, like she has always repeated: "Everything is possible if you believe in yourself." Being a mother, 
is pure love. It's not something else. It's not love for yourself. It's different from other kind of love. It's unconditional love. When I see them, they are gifts from God. I work hard and they are my precious gifts. I just would love to raise them up with a good quality. In a few years, I really need to settle down with someone. I really need the male figure, the role model for Andrew and Angelica. Someone that I can be proud and call uncle or later on call daddy. Family is the value of my life. And I was raised up with the family value. I do believe that we should have the gratitude and respect over people that look after us. I bought like eight houses actually, all at the same time. One house for my dad in the same compound, one for my mom, one for myself, one for my sister. Uh, so we can go see each other all the time. That's why the family is very important. I just still can see them, feel them, that they are still around me. And I'm so lucky that my mom, she just said, Andrew and Angelica, both of them, they are wonderful grandchildren. I will look after them. You have to make sure that you don't want to be famous because you want to be loved, but you want to be famous because you can inspire people. And I live my life to teach, to inspire, and contribute goodness to the society. The philosophy, the mindset, and everything that I can share with them in terms of doing business. Life Inspired for Thailand is a nonprofit organization founded on August 14th, 2018, with a vision to advocate gender equality for men and women, to gain equivalent civil rights for everyone, regardless of their birth gender. The organization calls for the equality in education, employment, and marriage in Thailand. Consequently, the event Lift to Touch the Sky was launched to address gender title change with gender change, to support transgender equality, and to fundraise for educational and financial support for any transgenders wishing to better their life skills and education in order to live sustainably and purposefully in Thailand. The campaign started with the premiere of Kejti, a Bollywood movie starring Hashish Sharma, an Indian superstar. This was his first time to play a trans woman role. Catch the movie soundtrack, I Wanna Touch the Sky, featured Anne Jacopone in the music video, which reflected the vision of the campaign and promoted it. The Naked Truth, I'm Every Woman, was an exhibition where 40 famous trans women from all over Thailand were photographed naked by Yai Amat to push the approval of the Transgender Rights Recognition Act. And Jakapong, Chakra Tutati, CEO and founder of Lift Foundation, decided to stand up for this campaign to show that transgenders can live a successful and prestigious life but we are only trapped in a wrong body. We are smart and worthy. Although we are transgenders, it is unacceptable to be ignored and our gender identity must be respected by the act. Gender title change with gender change. Being rich or being wealthy, it doesn't mean anything to me apart from Okay, from now on, I have to work even harder. Project Runway Thailand is also one of my dreams. Being the leading lady in terms of the fashion industry, you have to struggle, you have to really be in the competition and get the best of yourself out there. I failed so many times in my life, I have to prove it. So you have to do the same thing. And it was my policy that I would love to have trans women on the runway. In year 2018, I went to see the Miss Universe competition conducted in Thailand. And I saw Miss Universe Spain walked out on the stage gracefully. 
It was the very first time that we allowed trans women to be on the stage in the competition. That's why she changed me also, that I have to do something. Inspire me, encourage me that I'm a trans woman, I should empower women. <laughs> right now, I am the owner of Miss Universe Organization. The trans woman from Thailand owned the Miss Universe Organization after 71 years old. I would love to send this message to all women and trans women across the whole world. The power of being yourself, in fact, and being brave to express yourself. Never be afraid to tell people what you think with integrity. Transform pressure to become motivation and accomplish that goal. To get where she is and achieve the status of a billionaire transgender was not easy. Yet it did not take more than her effort and determination to accomplish her goals. She went through tough and challenging times, either being pressured by her family, being taunted, or being sexually abused. All of these had shaped her since her childhood and became the driving force that pushes her to prevail every obstacle, transform negativity to motivation, and commit to eliminate insults. These were life lessons she will never forget and began to put puzzles together, strategically plan her life to fulfill her goals. Every step she took has contributed to her transformation. She transformed a local video rental shop into a public listed company managing and distributing global copyrighted content. She transformed herself from a Thai man of Chinese descent to the third richest trans woman in the world. And she has won the Woman of the Year award two consecutive years. She has transformed a content company into a content commerce company and owns a digital terrestrial TV, JKN18. Now it is time to step into a global content commerce company by transforming into the universe in 100% ownership of the Miss Universe organization to empower all women and trans women to have the courage to overcome challenges and achieve their life goals.